Hey guys, now this video was filmed a couple days ago. This rooster I have here I've had for years and I decided that there's been so many birds that I've loved and lost over the years and why not try to, you know, preserve their spirit. And so I decided to give taxidermy a try and I've kind of educated myself via YouTube watching several taxidermists do their thing. And so when he passed away, I just decided that this would be my first project and my first spirit preserved. Um, as we go through this video, it's kind of, I don't know, in a way it made me sad to cut on him. I felt a little nauseous and, you know, I guess I, that comes with everybody's first project when you don't really have the stomach for stuff like that. But. Um, I think he's going to turn out really well, and um, it's going to be a three-part series. Here I'm locating his breastbone to where I'll make the first incision. It's kind of difficult part. I tried to close his eye because I didn't want my guy looking at me. It made me feel bad. Um, as I located the breastbone, I made my incision down to the vent. So you can see that I'm still unsure. Got my scalpel. Make sure you have new scalpels and new, and new blades for your scalpel because You'll need to change it out several times. And what I did with this guy is I actually put him in the freezer so it wasn't like all gory and bloody, which was very nice. That's, I didn't want to see a bunch of blood and deal with all that. Sorry, my lighting wasn't the best either. And the reason I'm adding my audio afterwards is because with this project, I just really wanted to focus and not talk too much. I just wanted to do a good job and do it right. And I know there's so many different ways to actually do this, but I just kind of went with the basics that I've learned and you know, took little bits and pieces from each video I watched from other taxidermists. You know, this is something I wish I would have got into years ago because I've just, I've lost so many birds due to, you know, natural causes because, I mean, they get old, they die, it happens. But some are just chickens and others are just, you know, you love them. They're close to you. You want to, you don't want to just put them in the ground. This guy is still kind of frozen, you know, his legs are stiff. He does begin to thaw out a bit more throughout the video, and I'm able to flex his legs around, and he is a milly rooster. And they're such neat little birds, and he's been in so many of my videos, which makes me sad. I just really take my time with this and go slow and steady. I think that's the key in taxidermy is patience. You know, you can't rush through stuff or it's going to come out looking like a dead bird instead of a, you know, bird with life still in it. I'm just slowly peeling back the skin. And with birds, you can see the feather shaft through the skin. And you don't want to cut through that because their skin is really thin. I 
I asked a local taxidermist here in Oklahoma how much he would charge me to do this for me. He said $375. I was like, okay. So, you know, I'm a crafty person. I'm an artist. I can, I can figure this out for next to nothing and do it myself. I just got to get past my fear of cutting into something that I loved and raised for eight years. I think my biggest fear with this was taking the eyes out and cutting the head off and, you know, cutting through the legs and the wing bones. I mean, that just makes me cringe. I don't even like to eat chicken with bones in it because I don't like to touch it. So, that, you know, makes it a little difficult for somebody with a weird food fetish to have to cut through bones and... I don't know if you guys know this, but, you know, um, there's these larvae, they're black soldier larvae, I actually raise them for my peacocks, they're similar to millworms, but you could put a whole fish in there, and within a day, you know, everything will be gone but the bones. So what I went ahead and did with this rooster is I put the head in there, and they completely clean the skull for me. So once I get the body mount and stuff all ready and the skin all cleaned, which will be part two, and I'll be able to show that to you guys. You know, that, that took away from me having to take out his eyes and his brain. So that just, that process worked for me pretty well. I'm telling you guys, I've sat through hours and hours of videos just watching people do birds and I even watched somebody do a Siberian tiger, which was totally crazy. <coughs> Pretty neat though. I mean, it looked so alive and so beautiful afterwards. As beautiful as it, you know, would have alive. So, taxidermy really is a neat thing when it's done right. and. You know, you have respect for the animal. What you're already equipped with if you hatched it and you raised it all these years and you know that love and respect is already there and therefore the light at the end of the tunnel is it's gonna turn out to be a beautiful project. If your heart's in it and you can stomach all this Now this bird, he did die with a full crop, and I was trying so hard not to cut through that crop because I was just, I feared the content inside, <laughs> you know, the cracked corn, and I just was trying so hard not to cut through that crop, which I managed to not do, so that was cool. Have to cut down a little further. That way we're not pulling when it comes up to around the chest and the neck. Try to do both parts equally, you know, from left to right. That way you're not ripping or tearing the skin. Once I got going on this, it really wasn't as bad as I thought it would be.
just slowly cutting the skin back from the breastbone and the meat down to the vent. And when it's frozen, it's kind of, it's a little bit easier to separate the skin from the actual, the meat of the bird. I can't, I don't know, I've never tried, I mean, this is my very first project. I've never tried to, you know, mount a bird that isn't frozen. But I do raise peacocks and pheasants, as you guys know, and I've just, I've buried so many birds throughout the years. I've raised peacocks for 13 years now, and you know, they just die. Things happen, especially living in Oklahoma, like this climate, you know, the winters are bone chilling, the summers are scorching. I, I always feel so terrible for my birds, and you know, things just happen. Possums, raccoons, you name it. If any of you raise birds, I recommend giving taxidermy a try if there's a bird you love and you don't want to just bury them. You know, you want to preserve that bird and, yeah, if you can do it, I say do it and give it a try. I'm trying to be so gentle with him and just slow and steady and Almost as if he's still alive and can feel it, you know, and <laughs> I'm doing surgery or something. Which I've had to do on many birds that have got wounds from raccoons or possums. And my pins are covered by a game bird netting and sometimes owls will attack from above not seeing that netting and, you know, just gash the birds wide open and I gotta, I notice blood on the ground and I gotta find the bird that's, that's bleeding and stitch them up. You know? How much would a vet charge for that? I don't want to know. But I do doctor all my own stuff and, you know, the birds are healthy and happy and... So when something does die, it, it's really sad. Now I've seen on other videos there is a better way to go about, you know, doing the neck. You, you really don't have to cut all the way up like I did, but because the bird was frozen there was no way I was going to be able to pull the head inside out as you can see on other videos. There's, there was just no way. And these millies are bantams, they're, they're fairly tiny little birds. So if your bird isn't frozen, you're able to kind of just like pull, you know, and gently cut and almost like a sock, you can, you can do it that way and not have to cut all the way up the neck like I did. As you can see, I'm trying to work around that crop and not puncture it. Lots of serious facial expressions going on here. I really can't wait to finish this project. It's going to be so awesome. I know with game birds like pheasants and 
quail and stuff like that, they have a lot of fat on them. From the videos that I've watched, I mean, you have to scrape all that off. Yeah, there wasn't much of that on this little dude. Try to make your line as straight as possible if you do have to cut all the way up the neck. Just slowly working around that crop. Nice to know he died with a full belly, huh? Poor little dude. I think what got me the most of this project was the smell. Just, I swear it was in my nose for a couple days. I could just smell this, you know, very distinct smell. I'm assuming that's something that taxidermists get used to over time. <coughs> It's kind of difficult cutting around the neck. Um, which, again, there's a better way to do this, and I wish I would have known that prior to, you know, doing this for my first time because it's not going to be nothing to stitch it up, you know. You won't be able to see the, the stitches in him once you get the mount all into place and the body form. Now there was a couple of spots that I, I actually did end up going through the skin. I'm not sure if it was on the neck, or I'm pretty sure it was around the neck or the wing area, or you know, similar in between the two, maybe the shoulder area. You can see he died with a very full belly. It was just rough. <laughs>
I know this is kind of long and drawn out, and hopefully you guys hang on till the end, and maybe you'll learn something from my first time. So I've learned so much from other taxidermists on YouTube, and you know, just reading and researching, and he's starting to thaw out a little bit to where his legs can move. So I can position him around and you know, rotate him to whichever position I need him in to get the best angle for the cut that I'm trying to make. I'm trying to keep the feathers as clean as possible and intact and Here I'm cutting around the legs, or almost to the legs. And I try to do both sides equally, just a little bit at a time. That way, the risk of ripping the, um, the feathers or the skin, or puncturing the skin, is pretty low. You can kind of see the leg bone coming into the screen. And when you're doing this, guys, make sure you're in a comfortable spot. As you can see, I repositioned so many times. Because it is kind of a long process. sure as I get better at it, it'll be a quicker process, but for my first time I was just nervous and anxious and nauseous. But we're getting there. We're loosening the skin right on up.
Once you get to that leg bone, you should be able to push the skin back and pull the knee forward just by gently pulling and pushing at the same time. That way you can expose the kneecap. And just use your scalpel and just kind of cut the, the skin away from the meat. This guy had some muscular little legs, didn't he? He was such a handsome little dude. He had so much personality. A real ladies man too. He kind of left behind a lot of his ladies that loved him. I'm just slowly pushing that leg forward and pulling the skin back. I'm just trying to cut the meat away from the bone so I can see exactly what I'm working with here. I don't know when the next time is that I'll be doing this. I hope it ain't anytime soon because I don't want to lose another bird, but I'm going to say the next time I do this, I'm going to, I'll know a bit more and be able to do it a bit better. I mean, you see some taxidermy jobs that just, it looks like the bird is still alive. It's just so amazing. That guys have years and years of experience though and I'm trying to take bits and pieces of their experience and put it all into this one project well there's a first time for everything and you know when your heart's in it I mean you got it And now these Millies, they have beautiful, like almost auburn colored eyes. So I had to order some eyes for them and that's kind of what I'm waiting on. And just try to work that leg slowly down. Almost to the ankles where it, is what your target is, is. To get as much of the meat off as you possibly can. Because the last thing you want is for that to be rotting in your finished product. I mean, that would be terrible. Okay, let's find some more tools. Yes, the borax. This is used to soak up any liquids or, you know, to, for me, it really helped kind of make it more grippy to where I could pull that skin back and push the leg forward. And it also helps absorb a lot of the liquids and it helps preserve the skin. I mean, there's so many benefits to using borax and taxidermy. And I'm not even going to mention that it really helped with the smell. I mean, it's not like carving up a chicken for dinner. It's a, it's a very different smell, and I did not like it at all. I mean, as soon as I found him, I froze him. So he hadn't been, you know, he hadn't been dead for very long because I was just out there the morning before, and I found him. I was, I knew, well, there's my first project. I've been learning all this time, and... That's him. Now we're working on the other leg.
doing the same process as the other, as the uh, right leg. Just trying to expose the, all that meat, which you're going to have to be carving away from the bone. Add a little bit more borax just to give the liquid something to absorb into, as well as make it easier for you to grip the leg and pull down on the skin. Now this literally is almost like putting a sock on. You're just, you're turning the leg inside out, you're removing as much of the meat as you possibly can and exposing that bone. He's got some muscular legs, probably from all the ass kicking he's done over the years for such a tiny little dude. He's definitely kept some other roosters in check, that's for sure, especially when it came to his ladies. He was real serious about his ladies. Trying to loosen it up a bit more. You just gotta take your time and slowly get, you know, work around the skin and the body and be as gentle as possible. Well, back to that crop. I've almost got that fully cut away. Without puncturing it. That was a huge bonus. Because at this point the rooster is pretty much dethawed and the, therefore the contents in that crop are liquid, cracked corn, corn out of my garden, cantaloupe, watermelon, cabbage, you name it. I didn't want to smell it. Here I'm working around the right wing area, and around that crop. You definitely want a sharp scalpel for this process because it is rather difficult to cut through some of this stuff.
I have fresh blades, which I haven't had to change yet. So far it's been cutting through pretty nicely. I believe this took me about an hour and 47 minutes total to completely skin the bird. Now I went into this project with quite a bit of confidence and when I got around this neck area I kind of started to doubt <laughs> my skill level. But hey, it worked out. We're getting there. Just slowly cutting away from the body. Holding one side and with the other. We're about through the neck here. On my next project, I'm not going to go all the way up the neck like this because it really isn't necessary. I'm able to put my fingers through the back of it to, I, to where I can see exactly where I'm going with the scalpel. give these scissors a try here. I believe these are medical grade scissors used for removing stitches. So they're very sharp and super effective on this project. I've seen many taxidermists do their projects with no gloves on. I don't recommend that. But try not to cut through your gloves or, you know, poke yourself with your scalpels and the last thing you need is all your blood and the bird's feathers.
This part here did get a little bit easier once he started to de de thaw a bit more. Because I was able to move him around and, you know, get to the to the back of the neck with more ease and just the flexibility of the neck alone was just it was so much better than when he was completely frozen. Just try real hard not to cut through the skin itself. I was a bit unsure what to do when I got to the comb area, which now I know what to do, and I didn't do this right. You know, I could have done it a much easier way, which I've now learned after the fact, but hey, hey, we did our best, and I'm super stoked about this, the final project. I can't wait to show you guys as soon as I get there. He's going to be back to his natural state, and he just won't crow as much. He was quite the little crower, that's for sure. It's very difficult, like when you get to the ears, you just gotta try to stay as close to the skull as possible because you don't wanna rip through those ears. You can see the ear holes right at the base of the skull. You just wanna stay as close to that as possible so you're not ripping the skin because on your final project, that's gonna show through. Now with this bird in particular, they got the muffed feet and so it's a bit easier to hide, you know, mistakes than as if I was doing a pheasant or, you know, another bird that doesn't, that doesn't have feathered legs. And this guy was actually a bearded Millie, so, yeah, I was trying to keep as many of the feathers intact and as I could around the jawline and the ears. And then when you get to the eyelids, and you gotta, you know, just as, the same thing. Stay as close to the skull as possible, so you don't rip those eyelids because you're you're going to need those. And what I did is I I cut around the eye socket as close to the skull as possible. But like I said before, I I'm not about to dig out his eyes, and I just I couldn't bring myself to do it. So I allowed my black soldier larva to do that for me. And once they're done doing their job, then I can soak his skull in peroxide and clean it up. And I was thinking maybe I would use some clay to redo the wattles and the comb. So I've got some clay skills. And my goal here is to preserve as much of him in his natural stage as possible. But cutting around the ears and the eyes is probably the most, one of the most difficult parts. Um, 
I actually use just free-handed a brand new blade and even put it on the scalpel just you have to be so precise and the, not to mention I couldn't figure out how to get the safety thing off of this damn scalpel so I just said the hell with it I'm just gonna freehand it which was actually a bonus because I was able to be more precise in my cutting When you're doing projects for other people, I guess it you don't have so much emotion in it. But when you're doing a project and it's your own bird, it's hard not to remember all the times that you know, they looked at you through those eyes and it's just it's difficult. You just want to do the best job that you possibly can, and I guess that takes lots of experience and practice. So I have definitely seen some terrible taxidermy jobs. And that's the last thing I'm shooting for. It is a long process. I hope you guys have stuck with me through through this and continue to watch and learn. My son was supposed to be a part of this, you know, and film it for me. That way we could get better views because. He's only 10, but he is like, so awesome when it comes to technology and film and stuff. But he had fell asleep when I finally woke, you know, worked up the courage to actually get into this. So I set my camera up the best I could to give you guys the best view possible with what I was doing and tried to keep the bird in the frame throughout the video. It's kind of difficult to see where I'm at right now, but I'm at his comb. Staying as close to the base of the skull as I possibly can.
getting towards the beak. Working on the right eye. I'm trying to keep the eyelid completely intact. And we just about, about got the head done. Go ahead and get another blade. If you feel your last one isn't sharp enough to finish up what you're doing around your eyelids. Just about there on the head. Cutting around the left eye now. The head is now free. The eye socket or the eyelids are intact, they're not ripped. 
The comb is intact. The waddles are intact. Now back to the body. We're just about there. This is where you're going to have to cut your wings and your legs away from the body itself. When you go back in and you remove any of the meat in the wings, similar to the legs, you just got to push that skin back and kind of pull the wing out. You want to, your goal is to get the wing pulled out to about the elbow area of the bird to remove as much muscle, fat, and meat as you possibly can. Working down the spine. As you can see how beautiful his colors are. They've always reminded me of monarch butterflies. It was definitely worth diving into this experience and we'll just have to see how he turns out. Which I'll have to make a part two, and possibly a part three, but they will be nowhere near as long as these because the next steps in this process aren't that bad. Turn your bird over to get better access to the wings. Make a small incision, just down that one muscle. And you're trying to expose the bone. seen with a lot of taxidermists, they actually take their, their galvanized wire and they run it up the bone itself to hollow it out, take out any of that bone marrow, you know, anything that's going to attract parasites, bugs, you know, something that's going to nosh on your project over the years, that's the last thing you want. Right now I'm just making a small incision down the, the line of the bone in this left wing. Just trying to expose that bone which we can, you know, we'll stitch up later on.
is where we're cutting the wing away from the body. And these scissors here, these medical grade and, uh, scissors were just, they weren't strong enough. So we move on to the big guns. Using my tweezers to kind of separate from it, you know, the skin from some of the wing meat. You just got to work out which tools work best for you, and um, I know a, a bunch of different utensils are, are required for this process, especially with the different animals and you know, different anatomy. Okay. It got to the point where my scissors weren't quite cutting anymore. They were just running through it. And you got all those little tendons and stuff in the wings. Once you get that wing bone exposed enough to where you can cut it away from the body, that's when you're able to pull the skin <coughs> completely from the body. Which I believe I'm almost to that point. There we go. Nope, not quite.
now we cut the wing from the body itself. Okay. One wing down, one to go. It worked best to kind of use scissors to cut off the meat on that wing. As we're nearing the end of part one, I believe I finished this process out in part two. You just try to coat it with as much borax as possible to help absorb any liquids and all that good stuff. Once you get the wing removed, you can move to the back of the bird for the more ease. Thanks for watching.